Hey everyone, what's happening? If you're new to the channel, please take a second to hit the subscribe button and enjoy the video. Hey everyone, what's happening? Welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be a follow up on the 2004 and a half Cummins. In this video, I'm going to go over everything that was wrong with the truck. If you haven't watched the previous video, you probably want to go check that out and then continue on with this one. In case you're wondering, I did get all the parts for this build off of eBay and I am a part of the affiliate program. So any of you that shop on eBay, feel free to use the affiliate link in the description of any of my videos. It won't cost you any extra and it'll help benefit the channel by giving it a small commission of whatever you buy. So feel free to use that link and if you want you can drag it right over to your computer's home screen as just your eBay page link and anytime you order something you'll be helping the channel. So everything's back together on the truck now. Ended up putting two inch leveling coils, new shocks, sway bar end links, a complete steering package with tie rods, all the steering bars, the steering stabilizer, Put new U-joints on the front drive shaft and the bearing kit for that as well. That double carbon joint. And then put new hood shocks on and the grill support bracket was all rotted off. So I'm going to cut away and put all the footage I have of putting some of the new parts on and then I'll catch back up with you here at the truck. Here we got this all cleaned up and painted. Just waiting on the parts to arrive. Got new hood shocks on the way and it needs a new grill support you can see up there it's all rotted off I mean the whole bottom piece here missing Got this side all painted up too. Just waiting on the parts in a day or two we should have everything that way we'll be ready to start putting it back together. Ended up going with uh, two inch leveling springs they were about the same price as just a normal coil spring. So we'll put leveling springs, new shocks and then a complete steering package here on the front. As you probably Seen some pictures earlier in this video. The tie rod end here snapped off on the way home, so. I ended up just getting a whole new setup. And a new steering stabilizer. That's the old one laying there. But. Cleaned up pretty good. Most of it was just surface rust. Took a wire wheel over it and painted it up.
show you this broken spring here. There are the old shocks. And there's the bottom. Very bottom coil was broke. And it looked like it was like that for a long time. I mean, you can see here. Get out here in the light a little. That metal looks like that's been broke for a real long time. So. Got new sway bar end links coming. They were junk. All right, stay tuned. We'll have the parts here, like I said, in a day or two, and we'll get this all back together. There's the springs in the bed there. You see this one here that was broke. That last coil was just broke right off. All right, we're back here with the Cummins. Still waiting on a bunch of parts to come. Some of them were coming from California, so it's been taking a while. But this grill support finally came in, so we're going to get that on today. You can see there the new one on top of the box with the support bar the whole way across the bottom and you can see the three pieces here left of what was left of the uh, stock one so that thing was pretty much rotted away so get that installed so that'll be much nicer still waiting on the hood shocks there to come. We got this old one all off up here, so should be real easy. We we'll just bolt the new one on and then attach it here along the bottom of the grill. But the front end's still all tore apart here. Should have all the parts in the next day or two. The springs came already and Sway bar end links down there, they came, but still waiting for the front shocks, and can't put the springs in until we get them, so. In the next day or two, this thing will be back together, and be able to get it out of the garage here. Grease the whole front end while we're waiting on parts. It's amazing this thing has grease fittings top and bottom when your ball joints on both sides and most of the trucks nowadays everything's all sealed, so I'm not sure if they're aftermarket or what, but see the grease fitting there on the top and then down here on the lower one as well. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, it's kinda dark, but well, you can kind of see it, but yeah, right there is a, even a grease fitting on the lower one, so. Not sure if they're aftermarket or what, but that's sure nice they have grease fittings. They'll probably last a whole lot longer. Well, I'm going to get to installing this grill support bracket here and in a day or two. Should be back getting the rest of it together. Alright guys, the next problem here we found with the Cummins is when you put it in four wheel drive, I heard some clicking up front. So, after checking the front drive shaft, which I just removed from the truck, Found this universal here in the middle is shot. So we're going to go ahead and replace them. You can see down in here the thing's just all coming apart.
So it's good we caught that before it broke. Flying down the highway at 60 mile an hour. So I ordered some universals and should have them here by the end of the week. All right, guys, so the U-joints came in, so we're going to get them installed today. I ended up going with some Spicer ones. The part number for the Spicers are 5-1350X, and the X means these are the non-greasable version. So the non-greasable ones are a lot heavier duty, and normally they last longer than the ones with grease fittings. So we'll get these installed here today, and then later this afternoon I'll get this drive shaft back in the truck. All right, guys, here we are back with this drive shaft out of the Cummins. We got the U joints in and replaced, and on these double carton front drive shafts on all the Cummins and most Jeeps as well there's a bearing right here in the center and you might as well order that when you order your U-joints because once I took them out that center bearing was just gone I mean all the little ball bearings and stuff were just missing so ended up with more downtime waiting for that to come than if I would have just ordered it when I got the U-joint so if yours has this, has this double card and set up, just go ahead and order that center um, bearing kit as well. So next up, we'll get this installed in the truck. All right, guys, we got the drive shaft back in. The star bolts at the uh, axle end are T40s. And the best thing probably to use up at the transfer case is a ratcheting wrench. That's what I used. And they're 5 8 But yeah, you definitely want to keep after that joint up there. I know guys, and if you go on the diesel forums and stuff, there's plenty of guys that... If those joints go bad and that comes apart, it wipes out your transfer case. Some of the guys that wipes the tail housing off the transmission... Um, some of your wiring harnesses, your brake lines right here running down your frame rail. There's some guys that it caused over $6,000 worth of damage. So you definitely want to keep after them joints. If there's any play in them at all, get them replaced or remove the front shaft. This one here was terrible. I mean, the as you've seen in the previous clip there, I mean, a U-joint was absolutely shot. So it's all tight now and... With these being quality USA parts and the non-greasable version, they should last 100, 150,000 miles without even being touched. And like I said, on these double carton drive shaft setups, make sure you get order that center bearing when you're doing the upper U-joints because... You're probably going to need it, and it'll save you time from ordering it separate. And local parts stores, if they have it, which most don't, are double or three times as much almost as what you can get one online for. I ended up getting the Moog one, and their part number is 617. Spicer has one too, but no one local had it, and it was going to take a lot longer to have it shipped. So their parts are normally a little bit better quality and for universals that's the only thing I would go with is the Spicer ones and I'd get the X part number which is the non-greasable and the part numbers for these are 5-1350X I'll include a photo here somewhere through this video alright guys that project's done
right, guys, so here we are back at the truck. Uh, I'm going to climb up under here and just show you some of the parts. You can see here all the new parts I got were, most of them were all USA and they all have grease fittings. There's your, all your steering linkages and your steering stabilizer. Sway bar end links there are greasable. There's the new coils up through there and the shocks. So pretty much a whole new front end went under this thing. Went over the inside, gave it a quick cleaning. So I'll give you another view of that. Everything cleaned up really well. Like I said, I just went over it real quick. It would clean up even better if you took a little more time. But since I am going to sell this truck, didn't take as much time cleaning it up as I would have if I was going to keep it. But but again, for the year and the mileage on this truck. This interior is amazing condition. Climb under here and show you these new U joints. There, you can kind of see them up through there. But yeah, put replace both of those U joints and the uh, double carbon bearing that's in there as well. As you already seen from the clips. Here's the old parts. There's the tie rod there that snapped on the ride home. Probably one of the reasons it snapped was it was never ever greased. You can see down in there, that thing never had any grease in at all. And it does have a grease fitting. So, there's that spring that was broke. But yeah, if you go back and compare the first video I shot with the truck, the way I bought it, and then the interior here that after a quick cleaning came out pretty nice. There's the new hood shocks. Guys, they're only $20. When they're bad, replace them. It's so much easier when you need to pop the hood. Sounded like that guy I bought this from dealt with it with bad shocks for over a year. It's crazy. Spend more in gas a week than what it'd cost to replace them. And get them online. Advanced, they'll charge you probably 30, 40 bucks a piece. You can get a pair for 20, 25 bucks. There's the K&N intake again. 
And then up there is the new grill support. See all the new bolts there along the bottom. That holds the bottom of the hood latch here. All that whole bottom bar, if you remember from the videos there and the clips I put in, it's all missing. But yeah, all in all, very clean truck, other than some of the rust issues. But next owner, they can take care of them and they'll have a really cheap truck book value on this in good condition even with the mouths is 11 to 12 thousand bucks so rocker job is thousand eleven hundred some of the quotes I got so won't have that much in it and if the new buyer decides to go with a takeoff bed or flat bed, they won't have that much in it and they'll have a really nice truck. Alright guys, like I said, I am going to end up selling this truck, so thanks for following along on these two episodes of this truck, and stay tuned, I'm not sure yet what I'll end up replacing it with, but when I do, you'll be the first to see it here on the channel, so if you haven't already subscribed, please hit that subscribe button, make sure you hit that bell notification too, because if you don't, you probably won't get notified when I release these videos. But there it is, guys. All but the rust, it's road ready. And like I said, the truck's going to be sold. And we'll see what I end up replacing it with. Alright guys, please hit that like button, and I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe to keep these videos coming. You can also follow me on Facebook. The link is in the description below.